In this lesson, we're going to talk about viewport navigation and object manipulation. Alright, so we're going to start off with another level already loaded here just to make things a little bit easier. So to begin, let's talk about moving inside of the viewport. So to d begin with this, we'll hold down Alt on our keyboard and we'll hold down the left mouse button. This will allow you to orbit inside of the view. If you hold down Alt and the middle mouse button, this will allow you to pan. Alt and the right mouse button will allow you to zoom in and out smoothly. You can also use the scroll wheel by pushing that forward to zoom in and pulling it back to zoom out. Notice that the scroll wheel is an incremental zoom. This can be very easy to access and it's probably going to be used most of the time, but there are going to be some drawbacks. As you can see here, if I begin to zoom in on an object, I may not be able to get close enough or right to where I want to be able to see. So using the Alt right mouse button will allow you to smoothly zoom in and out and you can see things right up close and personal. So now that we've learned about moving in the viewport using the keyboard and mouse, uh, the, the normal way of doing that, let's talk about the fly through mode of doing that. This can be accessed by holding down the right mouse button. Whenever you do that and move the mouse, you'll notice that you can move your camera and look around in place. Now if you hold down the right mouse button and you press W on your keyboard, you'll notice that you can move forward. Hold down S and it moves back. Hold A and it moves to the left and D to the right. Now you can also hold down W and then move your mouse as you're holding down the right mouse button and you can fly through your level however you see fit. So I'm just holding down W and using my mouse to guide how I'm flying through the level. Now you may notice that it's flying through a little bit slow. If you want to speed that up, all you have to do is hold down the right mouse button and a direction that you want to move and then scroll that mouse wheel forward. Notice how it begins to pick up speed. If you want it to slow down, scroll the wheel back. I would suggest finding a speed that you're comfortable with and sticking with it. So something like this might be pretty good. Now it does happen that you might scroll a little too far and you get lost in your scene you might be able to find your scene or it might just be gone completely. So how do we get back to our scene? Well this can be done very quickly by using frame all and that's A on the keyboard. So press A and you'll notice that it frames in on everything that's in the scene and you can begin to orbit and pan as you see fit. Now this level is very large and so what happens is it frames everything and it's not getting as close as we would like. So what I want to do is I want to frame in on a specific object in my scene. So I'm going to go over here to my Explorer, Expand Units, and select the very first air conditioner. Go ahead and hit F on the keyboard, and you'll see that it frames in on that selected object. This will make it very easy to get back and forth into your level if you ever get lost. So now that we've talked about using the fly-through mode and f um, being able to frame and frame all, let's talk about manipulating objects in our scene. Now object manipulation is using your transform tools, so your move, rotate, and scale tools. You can access those tools by pressing the keyboard shortcuts of W, E, and R. Now you'll notice that if you are on the move tool and you press W, you'll notice the icon has changed to orange. What that means is that it's now in local space. If I press it one more time with it selected still, it will turn blue. That means it's in world space. You could also check to see if a tool is in world space or local space by left clicking and holding on it and you'll get a menu. And so you can see we have world and local. Now you'll see that rotation has the same capabilities. So if you press E twice it will switch between world and local. Now scale does not have that capability because it will always scale in the local direction of the object. So let's go to our move tool. What I want to do is I want to select this air conditioner right here on top and you can do that by left clicking. You can select multiple objects by holding down control and selecting those as well. So if you want to move these all at the same time, you could do it that way. Let's just select this one. So with our move tool, you'll see that we have our move gizmo. We can move objects in the X axis, the Y axis, and the Z axis. Now with the move tool, you also have biplanar movement capabilities. And what that means is that 
we can move an object in two different directions at the same time. So select right here on that box and you can move this back and forth. Now you can do this in any direction as you see fit. Now you'll see that the object we've gotten a little bit off of the building so I'm going to hit control Z to undo and I'm going to do that a couple of times. Perfect. So that's the move tool. Now if you were to rotate an object, so let's select the rotation tool, you could also hit E on the keyboard. You can rotate it on the X, Y, or Z axis, but you could also rotate it in the current view. So if I left click and hold right here without selecting an axis, you can see that I can rotate it in any direction that I want. And I could do it freely. Now you also have the ability to rotate based on the camera's view um, right down the vector in which it's looking, uh, looking there. So you can grab this blue circle and rotate it around the direction that the camera is looking. Okay. Now if we want to reset any rotations, we can come down here to the property editor and go to transform and simply zero out our rotations. Perfect. Now before we move on, I do want to go ahead and rotate this kind of in an odd direction because this may come up. So what I want to do is I want to now move this object in its own local space. If I go to the move tool, you'll see that the Z axis is still pointing straight up in the world. Let's left click on it one more time and you'll see it's now switched to the local space of the object. So now I can move that straight out based on the object's orientation. This is going to be very helpful for you whenever you begin to create levels of your own and there may be objects that aren't necessarily sitting on perfect flat surfaces like this. So the local position is going to really help you out. Now you can also do that with the rotation tool like I said. You'll see how that changes there. Let's go ahead and switch these back to world and let's zero out our rotation. Perfect and I'll go ahead and I'll drop that down. Now let's take a look at the scale tool. The scale tool you'll notice it doesn't have that local or world space but we can still um, use it in any fashion that we want. Um, it's automatically going to be in that local space. So I can scale it in the Z direction, make it a little bit taller. So if I wanted to make this asset look a little bit different than the others I could do so. If I want to scale it in the X and the Y I could do that. I could also scale it in two directions at once by hovering between the two axes that I want to scale. So if I want to make that much larger, I can totally do that. Now you could also scale it in all three directions doing a uniform scale. You do that by holding or uh, hovering over the box right here in the center of all three axes and just scale that up or down. Now you also have the ability to just type in your scale value. So if you just want to scale it twice the size, you could type that in. Perfect. Now I want to reset those back to one because I want that air conditioner to be nice and small. Perfect. So now that we have talked about viewport navigation and object manipulation, let's go ahead and move on into our next lesson where we're going to talk about customizing our UI because we may have a workflow that needs some special care and we want to be able to work faster and a custom UI is going to allow us to do that.